Okay, so today is uh, January 9th, 2022, and this is our Western Desiderata meeting. Actually, before the meeting, we are having a discussion, an intellectual discussion about our interaction with Paul Kings North. So whoever wants to have a, a word. I think what Tom said, what Tom said was, I think we could give it a Oh, my, yeah. my microphone is not working. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I think that first the thing you said that the only approach to service is what you are, and, what, and you're absolutely right. Yeah, so, so essentially I, I can't, I think you can forgive Paul for possibly just scratching the surface of all of the the conversations and the deep diving we've been doing on all of the things we've been talking about um, and you could be forgiven for thinking that we are misanthropes because I think often there's a frustration and a yeah uh, with with the human race but if he was to look a bit deeper then he'd realize that but it's yeah so and I, I think he's probably you know busy guy so he hasn't done the deep dive but what I was also saying was that um, a lot of people that are soul searching are reverting back to Christianity purely uh, maybe a, well from our perspective a misguided way because everything is framed as um, well they're framing it as a spiritual battle which in that sense I think that there is something in that uh, it's just yeah misguided to go back to they're conservatives, so they're, and a lot of conservatives are doing that now. They're framing everything as a spiritual battle, particularly in light of the pandemic and the fighting against powers. Because if you just come with data and science for to argue why you disagree with certain uh, draconian measures, then that just doesn't that's not working anymore. Um, so in that in that frame, that they they've got a point, I think of. Yeah, the spiritual battle, but but it's wrong to, from our perspective, to to revert back to Christianity. I don't know. I don't think Hugh did a. He never did that. Problems with Christianity video, but yeah, I was always waiting for that one. That was going to be a lot of work though after the Darwin one, but that would have been yeah, that would have been the icing on the cake. But it's a. I mean, how many would that be? That would probably and be another ten part video series. <laughs> oh yeah, it could be a lot. But I started on it. I've got some. I, I've done some material even on um, Atmos, which is uh, Saint John at, at Saint John's tomb. <laughs> um, but uh, and I said some outrageous things, which I mean, there were pilgrims <laughs> in the background, and they were they were trying to overhear what I was saying, which was very embarrassing because I could have got burned at the stake for the stuff I was saying on camera. But anyway, I'll put it together. I've done some stuff in Rome um, in, at the Colosseum and uh, at the Milvian Bridge. So I, 
I've been wanting to put it out, but uh, you know, you just take so many casualties for that. That's the real hardcore thing. So I, I do think it is a spiritual battle. I actually agree with them, and and I'm I you know I think we're on the same side. I think we're on the same side as these Christians, but um, it's Saint Paul's cult, you know. I mean, <laughs> Saint, Saint Paul, Kings North, and Saint Paul of, of Tarsus, but they um, they. It's this is why I think it's so dangerous what these people are doing. I, I just after that I, I came across this thing which I posted, and this is what I'm really scared of. I think that there's going to be an epidemic of it. It's this thing in this guy in Colombia, Colombia, you know, allowed him to do assisted suicide. And he's not really critically sick. I mean, he's sick, but he's not critically sick. So it, it's it's elective suicide. And I think what you're going to see is a lot of people doing this. So um, what's particularly interesting is exactly what I've been trying to get across to people, that, that our business is to make it through the challenges ahead. Our business is survival. We, we like humanity. We are on team human. The, the, the guys on, that we're against, the Christians and us, are, are team transhuman. They, they, I mean, it's not, everybody thinks that it's myth and misanthropic because it's an alien cortex conceit. Alien cortex calls itself humanity. I don't. I think it's an adjunct and it's it's lethal. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people say if you anti civ they say, well, you, you just hate everything. Because they're like, civ is not everything. Everything is nature, the sea, <laughs> it's the oxygen, it's the world system is everything. You are a tiny little part. Our global industrial civilization is narrow. It's conceited, self-centered, self-referential. It's a horrible little cancer. Uh, not little anymore. It started off as a horrible little cancer and it consumed the planet. And so, so that, they, they say that that's everything. Our civilization is everything. It's so, uh, you know, anthropocentric. And so then you say, I'm not against anthropos. I'm ag I'm against alien cortex. Uh, so and and anybody that's pro-human has to be against this left hemisphere little demon, which is God. It is literally God and the devil. We created God in our own image, or rather, the alien cortex does. I mean, it says it in the fucking Bible. It says about the logos. It is the logos? I am the word, and that's basically. Who's the word? It's Broca's area. It's Wernicke's area. It didn't even, it, it's your right hand writing like, you know, autodidactic. And it's just you know, terror. It, it's, 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 it's deeply challenging because all we've known is, is all of the institutions and the culture and everything that we've created in this world. And a lot of that, as Kings North was saying, does come from, I mean, it has in the West, it's all Christian root, isn't it? It's, like everything is based by that and that's what he was arguing that if you go back to if we we're missing something now but that's where he's missing the point that we're making because he's reverting back to say to try and conserve and go oh we've made it we've got we've taken a wrong sound and we need to head back to to what established civilization and it's like that doesn't make sense because that's where what's got us into this pickle that we're in now. That's the root of it, isn't it? it, it it's difficult. It's incredibly, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, that, absolutely. It's it's in Genesis three sixteen. It's all about you know that I give you dominion over the the plants and the animals and everything that moves to do with as you will and stuff. And it's it's like that. Genesis 3.16 is basically the charter for the destruction of the planet. There's, the, those words, there's more destruction done to those planets in the name of that paragraph than any other writing in history. The, the atomic bomb, E equals MC squared, hasn't come close to the damage that, that that one paragraph has done. And to actually go through, you know, a kind of catharsis of understanding the planet and stuff, and then run back to the alien cortex is just pure Stockholm syndrome, right? It's 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 you you running back to the demon that did this. I also I also think that not only is it a conservative stance, but I mean I think that as also <clears throat> as a as an author a writer who is used to be in circles of people who are always 
I mean, he's a great writer. And I must say, I really, really like, I still like what he writes. I like what he's writing in the Abbey of Misrule and all the papers on the, the machine and the actual pandemic. I mean, it's brilliantly done. He's got a brilliant brain. He's a very clever guy. He's, you know, but I'm fed up of tiptoeing around religious people because there's this kind of thing where you have to respect every time it comes, whether it, I've got some Muslim friends, it's the same story. Do you know, I, I've given up on respect for any religion of any kind. Personally, I, I don't take any gloves now because it's been, that's another conservative thing that we've been built in. You have to respect religion. So they don't pay tax. Um, they they can they can teach kids and probably rape them. They can you know it's it's all this respect for religion. I I just don't get it anymore. And I I mean you really literally as soon as you touch the the sensitive spot of religion, you're walking on eggshells. Do you know you just think okay I must think it's a bit like being politically correct and it's a bit like you know all these new woke type of things. It's the same logic what do you think yeah nobody will call it and so so it but there's something very disingenuous and a lot of it was done as a reaction i think to the holocaust because a, a lot of this stuff has been steered by zionism and it, it is the alien cortex protecting itself all of this stuff started with the Aryans, right it, it goes further back than genesis moses is is really um uh, uh um, uh, Hyksos. So he's uh, he's really, um, you know, an Egyptian priest and uh, he's Aryan. And so uh, that Aryan thing, the Zionists and Nazis and stuff, they're all Aryans. So, so all of this stuff is protection for the, the alien cortex. This is the alien cortex protecting itself in this kind of Janus-headed way. Because if you you know, it has two heads. It is you know, like Tweedledum and Tweedledee, and it's and it's it says if you if you attack, you know, this this head, then this head becomes the victim, and then that head becomes the perpetrator. If you attack that head, it switches. So you you, you in court in this double bind, and that's that's the game. Is is it's a no win situation. If you go to go for Peter or go for Paul, you get you get equally condemned by Peter or Paul so that you can go for neither and then hey, hey alien cortex wins. And so it's playing this du duplicitous game. And so the way through it is to say, look, we're sick of this game. We don't we don't want to play, you know, bipolar partisan politics. We don't want to we Zion, Zionists and Nazis are the same thing. This you can get, sh stop the shit about anti-Semitism. We're not anti-Semitic. We're anti-Zionist. We're anti the same reason why we anti-Nazi. It's the same. And the same reason why you're anti-communist. All of these things are the same. It's like somebody just call it and say, we're sick of this bullshit. So stop playing like you know, Democrat or Republican and that. It's, they're all the same. All of these things are the alien cortex playing this duplicitous game. And so, so you know, it, a lot of the Zionist thing came down as you can't say anything against religion. Why? Because otherwise it translates to anti-Semitism and that translates to anti, you know, alien cortex. And so it's, it's just a game of the alien cortex. It's the demon protecting itself. So Moloch and the machine, everything that, that Kings North writes about, he runs to Moloch. Right? If, if you go, if, if, if Kings North sees this, he should go and see, you know, have another look at Metropolis if you haven't seen it before. It lays it out there bare. It says exactly what the machine is. It's Moloch. Who's Moloch? It's the Christian God. It's Baal. <laughs> so, so the Christian God has two brothers, right? It's a, if you if you want to stop believing in Christianity, just go and have a look at the history. There's three Sumerian gods. There's Hadad. There's Yahweh and there's Baal, I think it is. But anyway, the those are the three guys. The Hyksos take Yahweh and then they start, you know, beating up the other god. That's why you see this ding dong battle in the old testament between about Baal and the, the, the bull and all of that stuff. But, um, but, yeah, but there is a big compliment for you in the at the end of the message I was reading, saying that uh, um 
the, the cult circle, uh, interestingly enough, with his self-regard, self-penned sacred text, and deep sense of certainty about the shape of the universe, Hugh does make an excellent cult leader. <laughs> so, the shape of the universe? What? Yeah, yeah, your sense of certainty about the shape of the universe. He's so, being I, sarcastic. I, yeah, so I think we're going back to superficial, I mean, a superficial analysis of who we are and, you know, kind of putting us in a box and all that. So, as you said, I think it would be a good occasion to invite him if ever he listens to this or maybe if I write to him again to 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 dive into it if he wants because we've, I've, and personally I have read a lot of his books. I've followed The Dark Mountain for many years. I know a lot of things about him. So why doesn't he do the same? Because then he might not get this wrong idea and... But anyway, you're a great cult leader. But, but do you think he's being serious with that or do you think he's being uh, sarcastic? I don't know. It's, uh, it's, uh, I think he's, it's very difficult. I'll send you the email if you like. You, you look at it yourself. I, I can send it to everybody else. It's, not, it's just, I, I think he's in the, he doesn't understand what's happened there. Is, it escapes his usual um, surroundings are not like we are. He's on he's on swampy territory there. So I would like I would love to talk to him. Oh, me but, too. But uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, I have to be a sense maker to get an interview with Paul. I think uh, <laughs> you know, uh, like uh, he's doing some quite high profile interviews now, isn't he? I don't know why was it. Why wouldn't he come on? Is that because he he's afraid he didn't want it recorded either, did he? What was I, the reason? I think he, saw, he thought saw some of the stuff that I said and he was insulted. Yeah, he, he went on the sub and he read the first reaction to I can't remember when it was. There was a comment on the Charles Eisenstein and Paul um, uh, interview, and there was a series of comments on uh, his position. And from then on, I had contacted him. So I'd say he went back on the sub and then his response was published today. And then there was an exchange with me. And, uh, you know, it's just a series of. So he calls what we what we saying, he calls it junk at, at one stage in one of the email. So I I don't want to engage on that level. I just don't. Consider what we're doing. Yeah, but I don't I don't. Consider I don't as producing so we'll have to just maybe let it sleep a bit i think and yeah i think let it, let the it, manifesto it, and it, more important things that um might want to discuss now but uh yeah but no i thought i mean i'm pleased with this result <laughs> you might be be confused why but the you know it uh there needs to be some stirring up you know, I mean, it's uh, you can't play nice in this game. We 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 at the end game. It is of biblical consequences. This is the end of the human story, and and you can't uh, play pussy footsy nicey stuff. There's there's not enough time left for that. You you got to be brutally honest, and everybody must must just uh, accept that you know we're talking from our brutal honesty <laughs> part, and uh, we. We're not playing vindictive games or anything. It's there's a lot at stake. You see, they, these guys are circling around the intellectual dark web, and you know, I, I mean, Paul's got the chops to to go, you know, on the on that circuit and become quite famous. But I think it's very, very dangerous because there's a big. I think there's a big potential audience for that Christian message. And as far as I'm concerned, all the psychology I know and have seen firsthand is that's a that's a kool-aid circle right there those guys are heading for the kool-aid that's why i get so animated about um about jem bendel i know that tone i i know this demon and just trust me i know this fucking demon and this demon is the kool-aid demon this this is fina barbital in the jungle it's they they they're walking willfully in this path and it's it's the, the path laid down by Christ. This is this is what Jesus did. It was uh, the, the, Jesus is evil, and the reason why Jesus is evil was because he said, you know, well, I mean, the 
at least his chroniclers said that 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 uh, he is doing the suffering for you. So he is making the sacrifice. Your alien cortex doesn't need to die. You don't have to go through you, you psychosis and transformation. I'll do it for you. And it's a lie. Again, it's alien cortex substitution. It's you have to suffer. You have to go through this. This is what's bad about that guy in Colombia committing suicide. He said, I don't think God's going to hold it against me for just, you know, kind of booking out of the suffering. Now, we've just been talking in the previous me meeting about how everybody's kind of mollycoddled and soft. And so, you know, this is the biggest danger is as we go into this real thing, you're supposed to go through trial by fire and suffering, which leads to your eupsychosis and your transformation and enlightenment. What these guys are going to do is they're going to fake it and commit suicide, just like Christ with his little fucking nail scissors in the artery. So this is dangerous, dangerous territory. And, and you see, they easily have the capacity to know what I'm talking about. But if, if but they, they're going willfully. They're following the siren song to death. And anybody that follows will actually taste the Kool-Aid. Our aim is to live, to make sure that somebody makes it through this bottleneck. And, and these guys are not candidates for it. These guys are candidates for, for an early exit by uh, the people's temple or, you know, the heaven's gate. See, it's, heaven's gate is literally saying what these guys are saying. Heaven's gate is, is literally a metaphor for suicide. So, so these guys are necromancers. They're suicidal. So you, you can see it. that You go through the, the pain of Dark Mountain, the pain of, uh, of seeing this planet die. There's all the stuff that we've, we've been through to, to get to as doomers. And so they, they've been through that pain, and they want pain relief. They, they, don't, they want to go through this birth with an epidural. You, you can't go through this birth with an epidural. You have to go through it conscious. Right? It's, it's part of the process where the metaphor breaks down with rebirth. Is It's a psychological rebirth. Part of the birthing process is pain. So you, you, you can't extract the pain out of it. Use this intellectual chloroform and all of this Christian bullshit to try and say, ease your way yeah. through this. It's, it's not going to work. It, you're going to wind up in a fake transformation. And that tra fake transformation is a transformation unto death, to nothingness. There's no heaven. There's no, there's no place you go to. The, it's, it's just like that, that song by, by Astro. It's like, the physical world is the only world. <laughs> if, you, if you destroy the ground you work, walk on, nobody will take you anywhere. Just get that and stitch it on your fucking pillow. The physical world is heaven. Like, this is Arcadia. It, it's not Arcadia anymore because the alien cortex came into the Garden of Eden. But this planet is the Garden of Eden. <laughs> And so we, you fuck this up, and there's nothing. There's darkness. There's oblivion. There's not a heaven. There's nowhere to go to. We cannot fuck this up. Everything is on the line now. So well, these guys um, are very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Well, on another note, um, I want. I meant to say that at the beginning of the meeting, but I, I got a reply for uh, the uh, the DGR uh, uh, rep for the week of the 17th, so more, probably the 18th or the 19th, I will email everybody with the hour, she's given me times, etc. And it will be very interesting to talk to her because she has also witnessed firsthand the same meeting I was years ago with that um, uh, Jem Bendel type of group, uh, Deep Adaptation, where she completely freaked out like me um, on that day where she saw actually what you're talking about, um, this... Uh, the, the the pain as an end in itself kind of not a platform to to go or to something to run away from with all means that you could choose and with the christian background that permeates permeates irish life um you could feel that with your gut you didn't need to, any words you just wanted to run and she will probably share that when we talk with her um so I, i'll keep you posted on that probably uh, the 18th or the 19th, uh, you'll have to give me your, you know, if people are able, times and stuff like that. I'd like to be as many people on the call as possible. Mm. Yeah, that's excellent. 
Yeah. But anyway, I hope by communicating my anxiety to people about this, um, this is, you know, the trial of the century is coming up and it's uh, the trial of our whole species existence. So it's like, yeah, this is serious stuff. <laughs> There's nowhere to hide. There's nobody, nobody has indemnity on this Titanic. No, nobody has a little dry cabin that they can, you know, squeak through on. Yeah, so it's it's going to be challenging as all hell to make it through. You're going to have to be uh, like a ninja. Hugh, I also have a comment about um, perhaps, and I don't think we need to change, but just the name of the group, Extinctionati. Um, perhaps people think that, yeah, it's okay for us to be extinct. So people who just have a shallow or glancing look at our material say, well, therefore extinction, you know, like we're, we're, uh, we're in defeat mode and uh, we're just, you know, we just want to be extinct. <laughs> ah, there's a catch. So, so what it's supposed to be is, is actually, I love the name. And the reason why I love the name is exactly that, is that everybody thinks, oh, you know, we want to go extinct. No, it's a trap for the alien cortex. We want the alien cortex to go extinct. Ah, so, see the, okay. the alien the alien cortex is is has an element of Thanatos, you know, kind of Freudian psychology, this death wish. So there's Eros and Thanatos. So, so we could be called the Eronati, <laughs> as you know, so people that want life. But but that's the thing is we say. Come, come, little alien cortex. <laughs> you, know, you want death? Here, here, smell the incense. We're a church. We're a cult, you know, basically, you know, come, it's Kool-Aid at the end of the day. No, there isn't. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no like, Kool-Aid. Yeah, I say like, so basically, yeah, yeah, basically, basically I'm quite prepared to hand people Kool-Aid, but it has no phen phenobarbital in it. When you basically, you see, you see, imagine this. Uh, if uh, Jim Jones, uh, Jim, Jim Jones, uh, uh, or Jim Jones, in um, in uh, in you know the jungle of Guyana with the People's Temple, it's well worth going looking and analyzing what he's saying on those. They have them all recorded. They have his words and stuff. So <laughs> he talked on a microphone and stuff, and it's quite chilling. But when you you, when you get into it and really get into to what he's saying, he's saying, you know, this is uh, an escape to, to another another plane. But can, can you imagine what if he if he did this? If he took all his followers and he said, you know, all this phenobarbital and they take this Kool Aid and you're going to die. They all take the Kool Aid and then say, "You stupid fucks! You would take Kool Aid from some tit in a jungle." What what are you? How are you ever gonna live? How are you ever gonna be basically get to this communist utopia if you you get suckered that easily? And yeah, you know, I'd slap their freaking head. You imagine how, what a cool bunch that would be. Say now, go back to New York, fucking sort this thing out. You know, we're not supposed to commit suicide. The, the jungle. What's wrong with you, fucks? And they would have basically been transformed in that moment. But they would they would have been gone back to New York and been very affected. Now they're a joke. They they they've become a byword for idiocy. And and so and the, the same with Emmons Gate. You know the the prize winning uh, comment I think of 1998 was, you know, so so few comments, so many idiots. People people want them to go and fucking jump <laughs> off the ledge. Um, and so, you know, it's it's like we are suicidal. Part of our global industrial society is it's not all progressive and positive. There is an element of of, of loathing and hatred in it. It wants to it wants to die. Yeah, see, see, uh, Paul Kingsnorth in that said he made this interesting comment about order that you know he's got his house in order. See what the is is a conservative and he's thinking of order. We've spoken so many times about that order is the order of crystalline predictability. That that is the pillar of salt. You know that's um, so. If you want predictability and 
uh, determinism and you don't you don't like the mess and you don't like the uncertainty and the unpredictability of the of us you know if, which it doesn't because we give them a hard ride right so it's not safe you see so if you want the ultimate safety the ultimate safety predictability um where you absolutely guaranteed that nothing bad will happen to you or have no more pain is death that's what they really want. Underlying each, you know, one of these, the transhumanist agenda in, you know, all this millennia, millenarian scientism and futurism is, is this idea that things become predictable. You see, they want AI to make things safe, predictable, deterministic, take the risk out of everything. So, yeah, that means death. Right? The price of life is, is risk, uncertainty, chaos. And so they, they are utterly life-hating. And it, it comes through as order, it's law and order. That's basically regularity. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's certainty that they want. And, but they, but so, he went to, it's, to, when you say he's got his things in order, he, he went to go and live in a, 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 like a small holding in Ireland, didn't he? That's... No, um, no, 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 he internal order so he, he was careful to put the word <laughs> yeah. internal house yeah. the, the idea is a christian idea that, but the, the idea is a christian idea that you know my body is a temple for the lord and you know it's um, and then you know that's uh, so many references to my house and to temples oh, so by the way for arians a temple is, you know, like the temple in Jerusalem, the Jewish temple, and for the temples in um, in India, they they represent uh, representations of the human body, and so they uh, they have the sanctum sanctorum inside. It's the same in a in an, uh, a Hindu temple. They actually have a golden staff, and uh, uh, it's called the sanctum sanctorum, and that's. That staff represents your spine, and you know, this, the Egyptians had it too. The the, the column, the Jed column, you know, all the the Star Wars Jedi Knights. That that's the Jed column. That is your your spinal column. And so the the uh, this is something for the Aryans is they're building these temples to represent your your body. It's 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 kind of like a university. It's like a graphic university. So they show in the murals. They have murals. They have all the animals and things on the outside. That's saying. The outside world where there's your environment and animals and you know, habitat. And then they if you if you study the architecture of a temple, it is the philosophy of how they think your psyche is constructed. So they, they you know, if I don't think may Freud knew that, but if he'd known that, he could have gone and done a little tour of a of a Hindu temple and they would have shown him um, not not a Kali temple or a Shaivite temple but a Brahmanic uh, Hindu temple. And they, they, it, that would show you each, you know, each thing is laid out as bits of the psyche. You know, you can say, here you have the forecourt and here's the little temple that represents the id. <laughs> you can have a little tour of the human psyche, but I don't think a lot of people know that. But anyway, the, the whole thing is uh, why you have all this ritualization of the temple in, in Judaism. It's uh, the temple is more than a building, right? It's a representation of uh, the human body, and often in Hinduism they say the you know the, the temple with five gates, and it's like it, it's supposed to be a little bit of a conundrum that they tell novitiates you are like oh the sacred temple with the body of five gates, and you learn all about it and stuff, and eventually you go oh temple with five gates oh one two three <laughs> three four it's basically, uh, no, how many holes have you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, Temple of Nine Gates. Yeah, sorry. So, they, so then, you know, you go, oh, oh got it. Oh, it's a metaphor for the human body. Oh, I'm a clever student. And they go, yeah, congratulations, you graduated. But they, um, so that's that's the, the, the trick. And it's it's similar what they're doing with the, the Jewish temple, you know, the Temple of David. And so, it, there are codes in it. You see, that's why it comes in 
into Freemasonry and you have the pillar of um, Joe Obama. That's exactly, that's exactly what I was going to say. I went down a little rabbit hole the other day with, um, well, for a while, actually, there's a, um, there's a, all of that in law. If you look at all of the like legalese and, you know, like the uppercase letters, if you, you know everything when you have a bank account and you're, you know, all your documents that associate you with the state, your last name, your surname, is put in uppercase letters that's because that is a that's not english that is a grammatical complete nonsense it's babel it's uh it's dog latin so it's um it's a graphical representation but it only makes sense in uh you know all these um, things like the black's laws dictionary when you start looking into it they have all these symbols and meanings of, and that intrinsically links back to because a lot of that is all steeped in like the bible and you know christ and all these symbolism and patterns um this there's a really good channel actually i think i posted a few things of his over the last few months um justinian deception and he does a whole deep dive on accursius back in the uh 12 something or 11 something and accursius was a jurist and he was the first one that put the corpus juris together and he he formalized our modern the Roman legal system, you know, and um, he he made it so that everybody had to have a surname. So when you have your birth certificate before the age of majority, when you're you know you have your Christian name, and that is your name as a man or woman is, for example, me like T Thomas James. But then when you become an adult and you accept that, you go into the the uh, the debtor side of this office of this triangle office and you then become uh dead you essentially become your your two names are put together you think your name is your christian name and your surname put together but they're brought together to make you into a slave like you know to join the system of the dead which is all you know this admiralty law that's all maritime you know, corporate corporate law, which is all on the sea. Anyway, it goes he goes into all this. It's incredibly enlightening, but a lot of that is like you're saying. It's it's all like he looks at all these structures and he goes into the whole. He's got a whole video on the the alphabet, and he's figured out going through like the Chicago Manual of Styles on all this uh, language that they use, and it's quite yeah, it's quite scary. <laughs> it's, you, it's quite it's a deep. Is. I, I find it quite interesting. This rules everything in our world. I, I find it quite interesting that when I got a um, U.S. citizenship, uh, part of the naturalization process was this little mini ceremony, which was surprisingly Freemason. And but one of, one of it is is you got the chance to change your name. So I changed mine to a dumbass, of course. <laughs> but, but, but they, it was, it, you literally, you know, were given the ceremony of the death of your old, you know, self from the old world. And you're, you're, you had a chance. They basically did a little ceremony of the, your new identity complete with a new name, which I thought was striking. Uh, and uh, But it, it is all that kind of stuff that, that, that you you talk about anyway it's kind of interesting that coming out of that that naturalization process that they, they um the yeah I, I think i was the only white guy in like three thousand people in this large hall in los angeles and the, the but coming out out of that um there were lots of you know um guys trying to recruit you to get you sign up to sign up for, to vote and that was also pretty interesting because there are no democrats there they were, they were all conservatives and Republicans because all those new immigrants they become Republican, and I I don't think uh, I don't think Democrats know that they all pro immigration and stuff and they don't know they assume all these guys are you know coffee colored and stuff and they, they think oh well that's a natural Democrat uh, uh, those guys are as conservative as fuck I mean they they, they have a large uh, you know the first the first tenth of it. Is guys in uniform? They're all in the military, so they a lot of them are Filipinos, and they they their path to naturalization is service in the military, and, and so they, they're as Republican as you can get. They they almost the guys that storm the Capitol building, and uh, you know all these all these dimwit Dems are the, uh, you know and 
liberals, they're thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> these immigrants are our people. <laughs> no, they're not. they staunch Christians. <laughs> Oh my God, that was so funny that uh, anniversary, wasn't it? The storming of the Capitol, that they were playing it like it was, they were comparing it to the blooming, like almost to like Pearl Harbor or some, like, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's like <laughs> but, but, but they, they made this huge thing. It was so disastrous. Like, yeah, one person died, didn't they? And it was, it was someone who, you know, it was one of the protesters who was shot dead, you know. Um, I think the policeman that died, that was like afterwards for other health conditions. But I just like, yeah, unbelievable. Joe Biden and um, Kamala Harris, yeah, they did a speech and it was painful. It was awful. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah, massively div divisive, which is, is the whole game. But yeah, I mean, all of this stuff is theatre. So it's just it's just done for the consumption of the masses. They're not really going to let anything change because they, they have a vice grip. You know? so it's it's like that that other South African guy said on that divine base thing. It's like my double ganger. So, so South Africans know all this stuff because we went through it. South Africa was like a kindergarten where you could see all of this stuff. It was all it was small enough and parochial enough that you could see how how it all functions. We we saw how you know these secret societies like the Broederbond and stuff like that all all managed the country from behind the scenes. So nobody had any doubt about the deep state. I mean, the, the Broderbond was outed. They went to a meeting and they got all the number plates of, of all the guys in the meeting and they outed everybody. It was like the, the entire, you know, aristocracy in South Africa was, was, was part of the secret handshake organization, uh, you know, and the, they... So, so South Africans never had any problem with this. Every every South African, particularly white South Africans, that come to the you know civilized world, have this experience of shock where they realize, you know, you, you guys don't know what's going on, do you? <laughs> you know, because we can see it all, and and all these liberals and stuff, they they're completely taken in by it. You say you you do know what's going on here. You, you said they don't. And it's a shock. It was a shock for me to realize that, like, these guys don't do conspiracy theories. Like, you, that's like saying I don't do politics or I don't understand politics. It's like there, there is a deep state. They're running all this. The CIA. Do, do you, I mean, you can't. Can you honestly see like Bush Senior uh, go from being the head of the CIA to being the president, and then his dopey son, who has no other credentials except he's in skull and bones, <laughs> he's virtually a cretin, and he gets to be president and you're like are you not following the script guys it's, it's like yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like... yeah but you see what your your that man from south africa i listened to him quite uh he was very interesting i really liked that podcast uh he he's saying a lot of things we're talking about here like you exactly but one very interesting thing he stated that he said most of you here and he was talking mostly to britons and europeans uh boomers you've you've grown up in peace You've grown up in in sort of a relative, you know, hypnotized stability, whatever. And he, he was saying exactly what you're saying, because he got a, a rude awakening because of the conditions where you grew up. He was he was probably I'd say he's probably your age and he's, he's seen it all. So we here, my generation and the people after me haven't a clue. I mean, I, I, honestly, I'm still naive personally on certain but, things i i know that well um do you, know? you see when the regime crumbles you get a look behind the curtain so 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 we, we we you know we got the apocalypse where they draw back the curtain and you get to see all the shit behind the stage and you get the whole it's it's like a shakespearean play where they come and afterwards all the actors come out and take a bow and explain that's what the truth and reconciliation commission was so we got to see all of this shit and got all conspiracy theories confirmed in graphic detail and stuff. And so, but the same happened with the Soviet Union. Is a lot of the stuff we know about, the, the, the flippening and stuff, we know because of the collapse of the Soviet Union. You wouldn't heard about it if it wasn't for that. But we, we know all the stuff, all of this amazing shit came out because of the collapse of the Soviet Union. But I think people in America and Britain went and said, like, oh, that's the Soviet Union. And they're like, no, that's every fucking country. Do you think you're special? 
do, do, do you think that something different was going on in the Soviet Union to America? What fucking planet are you on? It's like that. You you think, oh, their their screen falls down and you get to see all the dirt behind the scenes and say, so, and then so you think Russia had dirty laundry in America. But it's it's a game of power. So the more power you have, the more skeletons in the closet you have, and the more the, the more um, nefarious stuff is going on behind the curtain. But Britain and America are the Britain and America are one thing. Right? They, they basically the British Empire moved to America. It's part of the banking system, and so you know that that is the power center. The, that's the new Rome. They model themselves on Rome, <laughs> Sparta. And so the the um, that is the new Rome. So the, it's like, you know, so you know they've got a thousand times dirtier secrets, and they come out all the time. I mean, why why do you think Blair's getting getting uh, knighted now? He's you can have a, a you can have a petition of a million people. I, you're not going to get anywhere because they exactly like what that Sarkin guy said was is is these guys are the middle management. All the guys who you think are in charge that you're going. You know, gluing your tits to the road and XR and stuff, pleading to them to do something about climate change. You, you, you are pleading to the hired help. You, you're asking the butler to go and reform the plantation. It's like these guys are nothing. They, they, I said that these guys are all um, uh, Neoplatonists, right? So the, the, so in the Neoplatonists, they say that you have these class of people. This is, again, it's the Aryan caste system. They said you have people of gold. These are the Brahmins, the people that behind the scenes run everything with a noble life. And then they say that, you know, the people are too dumb and too sheep-like to actually run. This is what it says in Plato. Go and look at the Timaeus and the, the Republic. And, it, and it's, it's saying like that, uh, you know, you, they have to be fooled and conjoled to think that they're in control and basically just basically paternalized because they're children. So then the second group are the silver individuals. Blair is this silver individual. He's, he, he is a guy who they give reward. He, he basically, they suck dick. They're bootlickers, right? That's their only thing. So Blair, I don't think Blair had any opinion on going to Iraq or not. I think he basically just did, he just knows what his masters wants, and he's prepared to basically be the front face on it. And so they, they have to give him the freaking knighthood because that's the system. It's like you you did our dirty work, we give you your reward. They can't not give him reward just because the sheep are paying. <laughs> it's like, come on, that's how the system works. So but everybody thinks Blair's somehow in control and he he, you know, is is Bush's poodle. And he went, well, Bush and Blair were just bit players in a much bigger scheme. I mean, come on, are you? You, you seriously think they went to war in Iraq because, because the president and prime minister wanted to go? It's like, they don't have any any desires other than to to basically move up in the in the you know the cupo. So they want to move up in the prison system. Blair is just like he's got his fingers in so many pies. I'm not. I, I know what you're saying. You're, you're exactly right. Of course, he's he's just a, a puppet, you know, but. He just, oh God, the, the things he does and this, he's just such a snake. He, he really, he is like evil personified. You look at the guy. <laughs> I think there was this, there was this, he's there on a Sunday. Think he's an exception. Sorry? They, they all are. The trick is to make you think he's an exception. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, yeah, a player okay. came from nothing, just like Obama. Obama came... From from uh, you know, party politics in in Chicago, Chicago is Mayor Daly's thing. This is this this is St. Valentine's Day massacre terror. This is the most corrupt, mafia-ridden city in America. He he came up through that. You think like? Do you think you do that by being nice? <laughs> do, you, do you think you do that by polishing shoes? No, you do that by licking boots of the guys in Destiny. You show that you're prepared to do any crime. And then basically they they will elevate you. So if you if you look good and you slick and you you have no moral qualms, uh, they will promote you. That's the deal that Obama made, and that's the deal. How do you think you get from nothing in a in a grammar school to to the halls of power? It's basically you elevated there. They select you, and you have to go through a, a, literally a ceremony 
right? In Bohemian Grove. <laughs> like, don't be stupid, man. Surely you can see all this. What's your take on this Kazakhstan business? Do you think that the America and the CIA are in, in there, like just trying to, it's like a play, you know, to get, to get, uh, to rile Russia? Or do you think yeah. it is a genuine uprising? I expect it's another, no, it's, like, it's, driven it's, 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 no, it's it's CIA. It comes straight from Gene Sharp's playbook. So it's it's the State Department meddling, trying to um, you see, because we're in the Cold War, the Second Cold War, right? And so, so Putin's playing games with uh, gas to Europe, um, and so, um, yeah, but but you, you know you got to, I mean, some, Putin's a psychopath, sure, but you got to be a little bit sympathetic because he's no worse than any of the others. They just want a buffer around Russia. They've, 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 they, they, America is 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 uh, aggressive, and it's uh, it's encircling China and and Russia and, and Iran in in a motor container and North Korea, but they're trying to bottle them up, right? They're trying to choke them, and so in no country. I mean, I mean, put the shoe on the other foot. If if Russian forces invaded Mexico or or Cuba <laughs> or Canada. Do, do you think America would go, nah, we're okay with them having hypersonic missiles on the border just <laughs> next to <laughs> next to the uh, next to the you know the falls in um, uh, you know on the Canadian side? We're fine with that. Remember you know, Cuba, Niagara, Niagara Falls remember missile Cuba. side, we're okay with that, you know. Remember what? Cuba, we I was a child, but I remember Cuba, you know, the the what what I mean at, at the time. Uh, I could hear grown-ups saying, "That's it, like we're toast." Do you know, it's but, the war. But do you know? Do you know why the Russians put missiles in Cuba? No. Well, well no I, one knows this part. Does anybody know the reason why? Well, they might know. Go ahead. It was retaliation for for America putting missiles in Turkey. The, America put medium-range missiles in in. Um, in Turkey, which was a huge upset in the Cold War. In fact, it was almost a declaration of war because it, you know, it took all the time. Everything is based on how many minutes you have to retaliate. It's mutually assured destruction is based on the ability to do equal damage to, to the enemy. So, so it's crucial that you have enough minutes to actually see, identify a missile threat and then be able to respond in kind. And so what they did by putting missiles in Turkey was a direct provocation because it said it took the, the time down from about 30 minutes to annihilating the Kremlin to about five. And so, so basically it's saying, you know, dude, click. We've got a gun here. Say so like, okay, blink. And so they had to respond. It was, it was a mortal threat to Russia. And they, they don't, they, don't they, they totally airbrush that out of this part of the story out of the the thing and then the next thing you know it's khrushchev aggressively putting missiles in cuba because he had to balance the threat on the missiles in turkey and so so but this was kennedy right we're very very lucky that the secret service took him out because the the uh what happened at the end of this was he he went through back channels and did a back channel agreement with uh, with Khrushchev. He said, like, okay, we'll take the missiles out of Turkey, um, and uh, um, in exchange, you know, we'll we'll help you save face on the on the missile crisis, and uh, and lift the block and but keep the blockade. And so Khrushchev had to agree because that was his aim: is to get the missiles out of Turkey, and that that was it. But but we came within the the, the doomsday clock said six minutes. So we came within six minutes of planetary destruction on, due, due, to, due to, to, to the Pentagon fucking it up royally. Tuesday, folks, isn't that two minutes now? <laughs> Did you say six minutes? <laughs> I think it's uh, like no, a... We're at two minutes to midnight. No, but, but no, we, we came six minutes away from a nuclear annihilation. So, so what Kennedy... Kennedy made a gargantuan fuck up. And this is why we have to take the top off the pyramid as soon as possible. Is is um, uh, he he had this false assumption that, that Khrushchev was in control of the missile batteries, the nuclear missile batteries, because he was. 
Kennedy was in direct command you know, the, in, in America. He has the nuclear football and the codes, and he has final launch authority. Um, uh, the Soviet Union was a lot more democratic, and that never occurred to Kennedy. They didn't know that. It was a hole in the intelligence. And so Khrushchev was, was kind of baffled that why Kennedy is on the phone all the fucking time to him, because he thought that Kennedy knows he's already devolved nuclear launch authority to the missile sites. So the, it's at the kernel level on a guy, you know, a guy 20 years old on a missile battery. He had launch authority and instructions that if he was attacked to launch. And, and some of the guys were, were wanted to. They, they, they did countdowns. And, and so Kennedy was talking to a shadow and Khrushchev was like, why are you talking to me? I was like, it's not in my hands where this, you know, these missiles get launched. And, and they never knew that. This all came out decades later. So this is why it's so dangerous. Is everybody has all these false assumptions. Right? So, so by these way, these guys might have silver, you know, these guys of silver caliber, they, they are just middle management, but they have their finger on the button, right? You see, you see the, the, the other guys are, you know, they, they're in the background. They're running the monetary system and stuff. But like any general in a field, the, the guys in the back rooms, they devolve authority to the guys in the field. You, you can't run a war out of, you know, a war room back in the home territory. You have to give um, complete command to your field commander otherwise you'll fucking lose and so the that's what they do they, they hand over control to, to people like they did um like um mac uh, um, mac uh, whatever his name is mac uh, millen mac no, mac tomorrow no mac uh, you know um in in korea um macarthur so yeah so so basically they handed complete uh, control over to macarthur and macarthur said well, we've got 4 million Chinese troops on the other side of the Yalu River. And I, I say we just fry them, just nuke them. And they said, get that bastard out of the field. We can't do that. But he was going to. MacArthur was, was going to drop nukes on him. The Tuesday clock is a, 100 seconds to midnight at the moment. <laughs> yeah, so. I, mean, I mean, literally... They did launch sequences. They got down to seconds. I mean, literal launches. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and of course that's why they ended up doing the the nuclear submarines, wasn't it? Um, eventually, because that was a better strategy to have them out at sea. But that, I mean, that's again, it's devolved, isn't it? So I guess they would just send some SMS message, and then the commander just has to do his thing. I guess. I don't know. I mean, yeah, but it's involved to them, isn't it? They have to decide, like, well, I guess they, they get a message and then they decide to launch, don't they? The, the uh, submarine uh, all around the world. Yeah, yeah um, they, there's an interesting thing, which they, they have a, a letter um, on, I suppose, uh, they, in the US submarines, but particularly in the Polaris submarines, the British submarines, have a letter from the Prime Minister. One of the first things a Prime Minister does when they sit down in office is write a letter to the nuclear commanders on the Polaris submarines. It's, it's, it's secret and it remains secret what they write, but what they're supposed to do is to write in what to do in the case that Britain's annihilated. And um, I think a number of people like, I think, Wilson and stuff is... He said, like, it's secret what I wrote, but, but you know, he says it's it, – they all of them, I think, have done the same, and they kind of give hints what they've written. But it's all the same. They, they say, you know, go to Australia and, and, and fight it out. Anyway, this is all relevant stuff. We, we, we are heading – we are barreling towards a hot war in case somebody missed the part here. How did we get there? <laughs> it's it's a plan. It's part of the Rockefeller Foundation. It's Operation Lockstep. This is the Milliways Doctrine. So if you if you want, we we got straight on to the the manifesto here, but but this this is part of a plan. It's a big coordinated plan. You can't tell anybody. 
because it, this this is you know don't look up is you can't tell the average normie in the street that this is all a coordinated plan but it is they've written it down they weren't even very they, they don't even cover their tracks because they're so secure in their in their authority yeah there was a good um piece by i think it's neil oliver he's a scottish uh like broadcaster here in the uk but he's a I don't, know, I don't think he was actually a historian. He's like an archaeologist. He's got a slot now on GB News. <laughs> but anyway, I don't really watch much GB News. But um, he's done these quite good monologues where he just sits there talking to camera. Uh, he did one last night. And he was saying, oh, yeah, do you remember all those those um, magic eye pictures back in the 90s? You know where you just you get the trick of it and you look and then you know like, and you see the pattern every time once you've got it in your brain. It's a brain trick, a visual trick. And um, he was saying that the pattern now is so obvious. And he was talking about what all the leaders around the world are saying. He said it started with Trudeau. And Trudeau was almost saying that people who don't get the vax are basically, uh, sorry, people don't get the, yeah, the poke are, um, yeah, basically sub, almost, I can't remember where he said it, it was maybe subhuman or something. And then Macron as well in France was saying basically, uh, it's like, you are a non-citizen if you don't get it, essentially, is decoded, is what he said. And then Boris said something about, oh, you know, that I can't remember exactly what he said, but, it's, you know, it's all, and he's like, can you see the pattern? They're all saying the same things all along the West now. This more and more authoritarian, like, march towards a war against the virus, a war against something, you know. It's, uh, uh, so, so the next thing that could, that that happens in the script is um, the financial great reset. So I've, I've been telling everybody, it's like, you know, it's it's un, it's unfolding. The aim the aim is to destroy all the fiat currencies and to have digital currencies. And the point of a digital currency is that you will be able to be in micro control with the digital currency. So 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 in other words, they they can not only make an unperson out of you at the flick of a switch, you can literally not buy food. And so... Well, it was quite so, interesting what that guy from South Africa was saying this, this when I was listening to this morning on the podcast about the, the 10 stages of genocide. He was going through the, the list that's on Genocide Watch on the internet. And he was, he, he, he was, trying, to, he was trying to describe at what stage different parts of the world were in in that uh, in that slow uh, managed extinction like you call it uh, but more or less like the genocide of eugenists which he uses the he uses the word eugenist in his uh, in his podcast i don't know if you know about those 10 stages but it's uh, i have them in front of me there it says a uh, it's like a first classification Sorry. second symbolization then discrimination dehumanization then organization, preparation, persecution, extermination. So, and so, I, I and post on, <laughs> so, so, so I did post on Exxon Med, um, the one for Turkey. I said that yeah. I posted that, and they're in the stage of preparation, yeah. which, which I've been warning people about, is the, 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 the uh, genocide in Turkey is in preparation stage. They're, they're very close to, to the execution. So... So sometime during the financial collapse, you know, the, the millions of Syrians that are in jeopardy there. In the camps. Uh, and so there are going to be some pretty grim times coming then, pretty grim. But, uh, yeah, and but anyway, there's, you know, it, you can see it all, like, coming together. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, there's, there's the financial great reset is the next thing. And then the thing is where I've been warning people is the chips. When they've got clean chip sets, uh, that uh, seems to me like the last uh, prep, prepping stage for, for war. Um, they're in a very advanced stage, um, advanced stages for war. You know, I mean, we, we're talking that they're mobilized. Right? If, if this was... Older times, right? This, in general, it's a declaration of war if you mobilize. You see what what made everybody um, 
all the dominoes fall into place for World War One was mobilization, and they 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 kind of each country forced itself into mobilization. But if you mobilize, you know, the country next door is forced to mobilize too. Mobilization is the next stage before invasion. So if uh, and mobilization is is grounds in international law you can you can attack a country if it mobilizes next door to you because you you know you can't no nobody would uh, would expect a country to stand by with such an imminent threat and we, we are literally at the stage of mobilization russia's mobilized uh, uh, iran's mobilized china's mobilized america's mobilized so so we we are deep into uh, the cold war um, and uh, you know, it's it, America is is um, is timing the beat. So America is setting the pace. You know, the, uh, China and stuff is is a kind of a victim to it. And so um, China, I don't see how China <laughs> China can shape because it has to. It can't do preemptive strike as far as I can see. And. Uh, but America, at some stage, has to do a preemptive strong. So part part of the the shock and awe is is nuclear, right? So there were, there were, you know, the way the the most shocking thing they can do to the world is is to start dropping nukes because the the whole world is primed into this belief that, like we were just talking about, that if you flick the switch, lights out for humanity. And uh, what I've been saying is it's not quite like that. You see, it, the, the Pentagon and stuff, they don't see it that way. have got an incredible diversity of, uh, of nuclear weapons. And they, they, they you know, run to small, small charges. So, so they can quite easily let off a few nukes that are virtually toys. But, you know, can you imagine what that would be like in the public psyche around the world? It's like nuclear war has started. It's like... Nah, it's barely bigger than the biggest, you know, the biggest conventional weapons they've got. But the psychological thing, they will, they will definitely use that for for shock and awe. They they have to shock everybody and and paralyze them for the next the next phases. I can't see how they can avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, like, there's a lot of talk about this sort of internet blackout. They've been, like, prepping, haven't they? There was some operation for, like, an internet down. And maybe that would be, like, a false flag reason to say, oh, look, China's attacked us. Here we go. And then they can start a war that way. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, a cyber attack. <laughs> yeah, but the, um, a cyber attack is, is a good um, cause of spellers. But the, the the best cause of ballast is is uh, to to try and um, do a feint, you know, try try to get G to invade Taiwan. But he he knows what they're trying, they're trying to do, but he's stuck because the the population in China has the expectation that they will have Taiwan by twenty twenty five. So so he kind of you know he's he's going to lose it internally if he doesn't like you know go for it. But uh, it, you know, America's desperate for him to do <laughs> that. <Taiwan. laughs> but uh, yeah, I I think what they they'll probably do is to try and um, em, embroil America in another. See, the the reason why they left uh, Afghanistan is it's preparation for war. All those guys have been pulled out of uh, Afghanistan to to prep for war. But the the obvious thing is to is to try and get them in a meat grinder in the Middle East, in Iran, and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. Um, that's, uh, I mean, that, from the Putin and Xi side, from the Pooba side, is to, is to try, you see, they have to drag America into um, a war of attrition. And America has to do a lightning war, Blitzkrieg. So that, that's the game. The, the two two are playing off, but anyway, Africa is going to be Africa is going to be very interesting because um, uh, what, Af Africa is one of the first theaters um, after the Middle East. Right? 
Yeah, I mean, surely America wouldn't be stupid enough to go in boots on the ground again, though, after what happened in Iraq and Afghanistan. I mean, no, they already they already in Mozambique. Right? They're already going in against Boko Haram in Nigeria and and uh, in East Africa. So it's, it's very quiet, but nobody knows about it. Sorry. The American boots on the ground in Mozambique. No. They're going against Boko Haram and, and in Central Africa, and particularly in East Africa, and the Horn, and that it's all very quiet. They don't, it's not being published very much. But they, they're up to their necks in, in Africa because, because China is in Africa. Special forces, isn't it? Like, you know, small, like, like all of them do anyway, don't they? It's not. That, that's how wars fall. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's how wars fought today. They, is, they, they, uh, they do what they do to the Viet Cong and all of those, those uh, you know, the, um, not the Viet Cong. Who were, who were the guys on the Vietnamese side, on the American side, and the young Mao? Who were they? No. What, uh, oh, anyway, those, those Hmong guys, they were, you know, they, they just used them as guerrillas. So you, you have a few, a few advisors, like they did in Afghanistan. You have few advisors, special forces, and then they uh, try and, you know, mobilize the, the, the locals. Right? Now, that's um, what's happening in Mozambique. Can I, can I change the subject, or do you have more to say about, about war and uh, World War, um, Cold War number? No, I no, go ahead. What... No, because um, this morning we only, in the Eastern meeting, we we started talking about the manifesto, but we didn't really go deep into it. And I was wondering if there was some feedback here about it, as I'm still at half of it because of all the emails I got today. <laughs> yeah, I've only got about half of it, but yeah, it looks really good. Um, I think there maybe was one typo early on, but no, I can't, <laughs> that's pretty minor. Um, it's good, yeah, it's pretty thorough. Um, I still, yeah, I don't know. I like the idea of. I guess you have to publish it online, of course, but um, yeah, maybe it should be in some kind of. Be good to try and make a book of it, wasn't it? A little uh, red book. <laughs> <laughs> so many links in it. Palatable for um, folks. Just uh, it, it, it's it left drips of like extremism and and conspiracy theory. I think than than some of the the video content seems like it does, um, just like the the it it seems like it it's put on a dress shirt and uh, is presentable. Yeah, what well, what do you, you think? It's okay. Does everybody is everybody okay if we adopt that as a manifesto? I think the science is a good amount as well. There's not too many graphs and charts. I think you, I mean, you, yeah, you describe things pretty well. It's, it's pretty approachable. It's not. I'm not very good at science, but it's pretty, yeah, understandable. I, I would before we before we greenlight it. I would try it against some, uh, uh, shall we say, normies, <laughs> some some folks that that can, uh, uh, we can. That that are not confirmation bias uh, prone. Yeah, I already yeah. sent it to some family members to check out. <laughs> I already sent it to my girlfriend and uh, my brother, but I don't think they would have read it. <laughs> I'll have to try and persuade them to even read the first page. I, I have a good suggestion for how we can normally test it. Is um, is uh, put it in front of XR because I I want to do the. Um, you know, goodbye and thanks for all the fish <laughs> post on XR Med and then migrate to the Extinction ID sub on Reddit. And and so I was going to just uh, go to Veneratio 5 if everybody agrees with the manifesto and just say, hey, just for old time's sake, will you post this on Extinction Rebellion and just say <laughs> <laughs> goodbye because <laughs> we, we're shipping out. Um, and just, and if, if he doesn't, then we can just you know, use a burner account or something to just uh, post it there, um, or or put it on other places like, you know, basically stalk them a bit, stick it on the 
YouTube and Facebook and stuff. But but uh, I I think yeah, basically all it's saying is you know goodbye, thanks for all the fish, and you know in case you're wondering what it was all about, here's the big reveal <laughs> in the manifesto. I, I and, was uh, wondering who would have the attention and the patience outside our little circle to read such a long thing. I, I think I said that this morning too. And this morning somebody wrote in the comments of the meeting, I just it just came back. I can't remember who it was. I think it was Divine Beast. And he said, um, if we print it, maybe we should do something with the first part of the book. In the middle part of the book, you have to flip the book to read the rest. <laughs> <laughs> that's a clever. That's a clever flipping the flipping book. Now we should make a flip book where the the, the earth just uh, yeah man come on that's cool. I, I think I, 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 I think I'm gonna have to do that for my video is do a flip book. I've skimmed it and the only you know I haven't I wanted to pour over it spend like a semester it's like an open university course. Um, no, no, we should but, we should. No, yeah. we, we should. It's just, it's just basically, uh, I'm getting impatient. I want to like uh, start, you know, popularizing it, and and seeing how far we can get. <laughs> um, the one typo I found was that you referred to uh, Klaus again as Charles. Uh, Klaus did Schwab. I? You said Charles oh. Schwab, which is a financial company. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, that's I, about I the only thing. the two up. Let me let me do. The other thing too is um, oh my god oh, you shit. mentioned you mentioned Klaus. war um, today in our forum you know in our meeting now would that be part of the collapse of GIC? Wait 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 wait, wait. I didn't hear you say that again please. Um, today we have been talking about war, um, but I don't think I saw any mention in the. Of course, it's about the flippening, but if we're I... saying. We want to survive the collapse of GIC. Wouldn't war be in there? I, I, you see, I I glossed over it and my put the reference to that the four horsemen video. You see that that the whole the four horsemen video was in 2010 and it was they were bang on. It was just a little bit too early, but they they sketched out pretty much what's coming, and yeah. So it's I I thought that. They they said it all there. I didn't want to. I didn't want to the financial Paul Horseman was that the one about the financial crisis and the um, I just completely all of them. It was really about collapse, right? So there was a documentary about um, yeah the Paul Horseman. Basically, there's war coming, there's financial collapse, and they figured it. But there, there's yeah I. I, I maybe if you want me to go through more, but I mean, I think we must do what stuff on the extinction arty sub and start doing posts where we develop all all these kind of themes. So it's it's just a teaser, really. The 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 you know. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's great. Thanks. Um, I I do have a bit of feedback on. Uh, the use of Google Docs, um, that that rubbed me the wrong way because it just tracks everybody. Oh, no, you're not going to use that. No, no, I've, I've yeah. put it on the on the, on the Cirrus Institute website as a PDF. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is up actually on there. You can see a link to it at the top left on the Cirrus Institute. But yeah, just direct everybody to the to that to the PDF. I, I uploaded it again today. I refreshed it, but you know, if everybody puts in edits um, and and stuff, and if if everybody's okay and approves it now, I think in the Eastern meeting we all kind of approved it. So if the Western meeting is you know gives it a thumbs up, then then I think we should should go with it, and we can change it at any time. Right? We can change it as it goes. And uh, it's it's just for the first quarter, twenty twenty two. You can you can you know modify it and re-release it that you know when it gets out of date. But 
I, I would like to do a couple of things. One of them is uh, to get this people uh, get the science check, you know, and for with people like um, Sabine Olson Felder and stuff like that. But any, anybody that would uh, look into it and engage. But I think I laid it out that this is, uh, you know, pseudoscience, the, the most earth science departments and that are, that train people to say this is pseudoscience. But it ain't. Yeah, I, I appreciated all of the references and um, I, it made me think it was kind of like a, a collapsopedia um, the, with all the, the different uh, links to follow. I imagine it's quite a, a gut punch if you never heard about doomerism, right? If you all think this is, uh, you know, a meter of sea level rise in 2100, it's might, might be a little shock. But uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, we should float it around the Duma community and stuff like that and just see see what people think but it's i mean it, i think the duma conversation is getting awfully stale <laughs> so i think it could do with a bit of fresh air are you going to send it to guy mcpherson yeah probably not him because he won't uh he won't do an interview with me again because he wanted to, he wanted me to edit the comments in the interviews that I did with him, and I refused to. There, there were some mildly negative comments, not that bad, but he he insisted. And so I this, I had this long ding dong battle with him, in about fifty emails, but uh, and he he like threatened legal action. He went completely over the top, but you know my line was you know I'm trying to advocate a free speech <laughs> zone i can, can't exactly start censoring people on my channel um i uh, said you know you're quite free to just do response and he says no I, I i i do that all the time and then just get snowed with more shit and, and so but anyway the whole gist of it was an anarchist anarchist argument about what constitutes authoritarianism and free speech and it it it, it turned out that he he's a complete authoritarian <laughs> as many or as many anarchists turn out to be when you start scratching the black paint off. But yeah, he's yeah, a lot of uh, anarchists are anti authoritarian, not because they're anti authoritarian in principle, it's because they want to be the authority. <laughs> they're like communists. <laughs> It's like, it's like afford legal action. That's a bit rich. Him threatening legal action. That's yeah, unbelievable. Definitely harshly. I reckon. Um, but anyway, uh, he's, 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 he's not a, in the running. He he won't go for it. Uh, send it to George Thaklasides. Oh, what's happened to George? Um, well, have you seen anything yeah. he's done in recent times? I haven't looked him up. I, I exchanged an email about a year ago, and uh, yeah, he's. He was in Greece at the time, and I said, you know, come out and visit. And he said um, he would love to, but he's um, he had to leg it back to the uh, doldrums, to the winter of discontent <laughs> on your way, Tom. So, um, yeah, but, yeah, Josh, yeah, be cool. And are you sending it to Faulty? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want to say also kind of goodbye and thanks for all of this. But yeah, so uh, Fort is interesting because they've, you know, they they failed. So the, the, the what what I'd like, I mean, I hope he doesn't take it the wrong way. But I want to say like, you know, it's it's like I said to him, it's like his tactics are obsolete. The you know. If you if you have a revolution now, <coughs> it's a youth revolution, <coughs> and the, the youth are they're in the metaverse. They're they're on their phones, 
for the idea that they're going to rise up in ire in this you know kind of moral outrage it's like it's never going to happen and you can see it so the the plan was that you know the the latest campaign would would yield a few hundred arrests <coughs> and yielded nine and then those were supposed to go on <coughs> to yield at least six thousand you know, in this in this quarter but i think nobody i mean Tom, what was your read on it? But I, I think that they're going to get almost no one now because the campaign got media attention, but it fell flat as far as I can see. Yeah, I, I, I haven't heard anything. I, I mean, I haven't really been following any news on that, uh, to be honest, so I'm not very good to give it. Perhaps Bob knows more. I, yeah, I mean, I haven't heard anything. I've been just following the usual thing and your posts and stuff, but or some of your posts, but so much. Yeah. yeah, I don't follow any of that anymore. I, I don't know if they're going to... I don't know. It, it all seems a bit... Um, well, it's pointless, isn't it? Yeah, it's always what I kind of thought. Is it's like, not even entertaining at the moment to think about. Yeah. But, I mean, where do they go? So if they... Seize Parliament in a grand insurrection. And, so and then what? And then we solve climate change. <laughs> How? <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose if people don't really yeah. recognize how fucked talking. everything is. Am I am I audible? Yeah, you, you are. Well, yeah. All right, yeah. I think, no, it's you know, Tom. Tom was talking, but he wasn't. All right, wasn't sorry. Me. Yeah, sorry. I was just going to say one thing I did notice along the similar lines of that police crimes bill was um, there was uh, there's that new Internet harms bill thing. And Big Brother Watch was saying, like, this is really bad news. But I mean, that's been in the pipeline for uh, some time now, even before COVID. But what their what their big steel is, their stick is that, you know, um, all these conspiracy theorists and you know all this kind of extremism online extremism is you know we need to crack down on that so they're really going gung-ho with that now i think that's all going through pretty soon um that was in the news last week so that's quite worrying um that's coming thick and fast now that was the latest sort of thing along that that sort of line but in relation to the police crime spill i can't remember when that actually goes through has it gone through i'm not sure but I uh, know it's in the it's in its third reading in the House of Lords, and then it'll go for royal assent. Um, so it'll it'll be, um, I guess February or March. Uh, it'll get get through to royal assent, and then become law. So but this was all the stuff that the Labour Party was was um, pushing for uh, under Blair and Jack Straw and all that motley crew, and it's it's like it seems bizarre to me how many people go. Oh, the UK democracy is eroded or whatever. And it's like there never was such a thing. And it, it's it's like if you ever bothered to pay any attention, I mean, I just find it boring now. Oh, I'm living in an authoritarian police state. Oh, you know, it's like I've I've been saying it's the only difference is now, if I say this as opposed to 20 years ago, is that nobody says anything about a tin foil hat at the moment. But um, this has just been the state. I mean, this is what the state is all about. I think that they had a wobble, didn't they? After World War II, they felt like they had to pretend to be nice for a bit, having slaughtered half of uh, mankind in pursuit of God knows what. And uh, they've been trying to sort of withdraw that pretense of niceness ever since. And uh, every little opportunity that comes along to, to erode it and whatever, take the mask off or whatever cliche. So, yeah. That's yeah, they, they had to be play nice because they were scared everybody would go communist when they thought all the GIs would come back from the front and go communist. Yeah, and so it, just, it was just a very slow them. process of them realizing that they had more, obviously they had more power than they, they thought because the, the, the sheep are easy to, to pacify when it comes down to it, I guess. Yeah, Eddie Bernays and that gave them all the tools. So yeah, we live in that shadow. But the um, yeah, we we're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to tap dance shortly. Um, 
but I, I, we, we made one sweep before a few years ago and uh, Reddit did a sweep and like they, they purged about a few hundred sites and like most people were amazed <laughs> that, that we made it through. But um, yeah, I, I think the the general tactics and stuff that we've been using, the, you know, just obfuscation, I think uh, I think we would survive a sweep, right? Because they, they generally put uh, what well, they used. To, I mean, maybe things are changing, but there are always two categories: is you know, aspirational and operational. And so you know, we 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 definitely be flagged as aspirational. Um, we haven't got any concrete plans um, and stuff. So um, we don't have any concrete plans here. <laughs> uh, so. Um, that that was normally enough to stay alive, um, but uh, they they're showing signs of uh, doing doing a sweep. But I, I think you know it's a, it's a game of how how high the the nail sticks proud. So you know the as the as the Chinese say you know the the nail that stands high gets the hammer, and and so they're a lot more they're a lot more nails higher than us. You know? So. So I don't think we would we would get some advance warning that the scythe was coming, um, but but any, anyway they're just trying to shut down conspiracy and uh, free speech. And so if you just be subtle, I mean I've I've been shut. I think I'm got the right level of obscurity and ambiguity that you know you wouldn't get ahead. Yeah, you see that that basically you would be assessed, right? So every, everybody's on. A, a threat list, and I mean, it's just everybody, uh, and and so the uh, you just bubble up from there based on a few you know keywords and a bit of AI doing some threat analysis on, on what what the conversation topics are. I mean, but but the Google is doing this shit just for commercial reasons. I mean, we say shit. I mean, I made make references to um, some obscure shit like uh, you know the temple or something like that. Now, I, I'll go on YouTube, and within an hour, they're fucking recommending shit with the temples or the areas and stuff. It's like they're analyzing the... You it's know, I mean, fucking creepy. It's yeah, fucking I mean, creepy, it's, that stuff. It's, when, when, when you upload a video to YouTube, they, they uh, basically do speech analysis. And you can see the speech analysis. I think this is happening in phone calls stuff. as well. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have but a WhatsApp anyway, that's or still, a, this is This yeah. has been going on for, for two decades. It's not new, right? This, this is since 9-11. Uh, so they, 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 you know, what it means is you bubble up the threat list. And, and then the at some stage, you know, the AI can't do much. At some stage, it just flags you for um, a threat analysis and then some stupid talpiot dickwad or somebody in Eglin Air, Air Force Base as some, you know, E-23 or something is given the task of, you know, just reviewing all of this shit. Now, I feel sorry for that poor bastard who has to view us. But and he's going to read the manifesto. <laughs> I, I had that as one of the things in mind. One of the reasons why it reads start shoot is that, is that some of the stuff I'm, I'm reviewing... So, so by by the, by the way, it, it's a zoo in the in the Pentagon and the CIA and the NSA and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's not homogeneous, right? Basically, the, the FBI is in, is is kind of on the woke side and in, in with the Dems and all. That. But they they are they are actually opposed to the guys in in like the Pentagon and the CIA. They're different. They're different planets, and within those guys, they have. A lot of shit that uh, you know. I told you about all the UFO guys and stuff. So the guys, the guys that I, I, you know, just just talking about the flipping is is the main event as far as I know for the the deep core of the story. <laughs> um, that's as deep as it goes. But there are lots of variations, and one of them is the lunatic fringe of uh, space force and uh, alien invasion, which they think is imminent and stuff. Of, Although yeah, they're all sorts of you know crazy nutcases in the zoo, and they all have their own competing agendas and plans, but the, but you know this, they all agree on one thing, and that's that they they gonna save their asses. Um, but yeah, so anyway, this this whole 
the only thing I said that's really um, incendiary is, is, is about the flipping. And I, I think they don't care about it too much because it's so well established as crackpot pseudoscience. So there's a, a level of safety in there. Um, but yeah, it, it's, um, it, uh, I, I think it, in terms of the, they're looking for the the Ted Crown in particular, that we'll, we'll get some points for talk, talking to Derek Jensen and DGR and stuff like that. Um, uh, but, you know, they, uh, in terms of a guy looking at us, um, you know, you've got to imagine a 25 year old guy and he, he looks at all of this stuff and, you, you know, you, he's only got a limited amount of time and he has to give, give some kind of a th assessment and move on. So in that time, I, I don't think we come anywhere close to being flagged. About that, that Ted video, um, <laughs> that, that right wing group in, in, uh, in my country, uh, were, were, um, they were talking about that, they were analyzing it, and then like, I guess it was because it was quite a long format video, those guys do anyway, and it was quite far in, but they were like openly talking, like half jokingly, but they were going into some interesting topics about um, how fragile the system is, and I, they were saying, I don't think people really realize like how fragile it is, you know, none of the leaders have ever seen the war. Um, we could just go in there, like just Joe Rogan goes out into the countryside and, uh, you know, gets all his, his Joe Rogan army and we can just go in and overthrow them. <laughs> and they were like openly talking about how easy it is. You're allowed to do that. But they run to a point. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm digging this. I'm like, <laughs> No, you, you're allowed to do to do that that's that's like libertarian talk and stuff but the um there are lots and lots of libertarian groups um and uh particularly on the right and by the way but you know blm and um not fucking around group and stuff like that all of those guys they they pretty freaking knocked us um and then uh, a lot of them are false fronts, right? They infiltrated and <laughs> controlled opposition. And stuff. You saw the thing with the governor of Michigan and that, that kidnapping and stuff. It was all fucking FBI sting operation. <laughs> the poor guys that got involved in that. But I thought those anarchists, well, they, they're libertarian. They're not quite quite anarchists. But they, well, they, they, well, they were analyzing libertarian. Uh, and I think they're kind of a watch watch like dissident right, alt right, really, but they are like definitely call, calling for like there's only one option now, which is basically we need to just go, you know, like revolution. Like that is what they are essentially, but they're just all a hodgepodge and they're like, how do we actually unify? Like it's impossible because they're all having in group fighting, you know, on the right. And, but yeah, they, they were joking about it, but they were like, you know, tongue in cheek. Like, that's what they're after, really. Um, because, of course, they're yeah, all they're back to, you know, to some bygone time when we didn't have all the shit that we have now, you know, the way the world is now. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, the, the problem with those guys is they, they're out of date. You see, most, most of the opposition is, is out of date because, they, you know, they've been planning for, for this moment for decades. So the, this, so if you if you're just starting your your anti-tech revolution and stuff now, they they've been you know building the bulwarks against you for a couple of decades already. So so you you really aren't. The woke stuff. I mean that's their main, you know, gripe. They're they're wholly wrapped up in all of the culture policy you know um the sgws of like you know all of the the leftist politics that they hate that they despise so they're they don't even even touch on anything to do with climate change or anything because of course that's traditionally a left issue but i don't even think they would it's not even on their radar even though they have looked at like conspiracy theories and stuff uh, they're they're more kind of concerned with globo homo and 
yeah, like the woke agenda and uh, transgender, all of that stuff, which is like, well, it's, it's worth talking about up to a point, but they are missing the bigger picture, as you say, and the, the technological. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a pity because the guys uh, think the same same way we do, but then you get to the sticking point of climate change is, uh, they believe is a left wing conspiracy, and then you get to Christianity, and then they will start Bible thumping, and it's like, oh God, you can't you just leave those out. <laughs> they can't. Um, but it's a pity because you know you, we we can certainly go some some way down the road with them. But anyway, um, th this kind of environment is is what we will have to negotiate going going forward because it's it's going to be you know like a bit dystopian and we're going to be in the middle of this totalitarian regime and then this this is what you do you 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 gauge what you can get away with you get gauge you know it's a, it's a dance that you do with the state and some um, always you know, a bit of push and pull and so you know it's over war and stuff but the the aim for us is, is basically we our only aim is for our group to get through the collapse of global industrial civilization and with the the dream goal of actually knocking the top of the permit so we could decentralize power which is the common goal with these other guys so it's like it doesn't really matter about climate change and the bible stuff as, as long as they want to decentralize power then they're allies because yeah, the it, yeah, just because i'm saying that the, the guys are going to do the scorpion and uh, sting us all to death in the death throes and so, uh, but the, I think the best way to get to that goal is through the cult. You know, basically, if you if you get a lot, uh, you know, a loose affiliation of people, then you can aspire to being like the White Lotus group and infiltrate all these things. But I tell you, there's so many groups in this, from the Scientologists and the Mormons and all these guys. You won't believe the zoo. All these guys that are jockeying for this, you know, the Everybody knows that the system's collapsing and all the vultures are circling and all the guys are just positioning yeah. and stuff. That's definitely why I think it's still worth trying to interact with people like that. I mean, it hasn't borne fruit yet, unfortunately, generally, <laughs> it seems, with our group. But maybe, it, yeah, because there are some interesting characters out there on, in this whole space of... Because they're all, yeah, I mean, all those guys essentially are they're on our side up to a point. There's certain goals that we would have aligned with them. But then the problem is that some of those people are talking about, yeah, we need to topple power and then we take power and do our things. I know that's the, yeah, up to the point of toppling power. Yeah, that's a good idea. But um... uh, Yeah, but they're, they're, they're more, they're, they're very sophisticated underground groups. Um, they're particularly hacker groups and stuff. And those... Those guys, um, those guys do have a chance, right? So anybody, uh, the cyber um, warriors and stuff, those those guys could take the, the system down. Um, and but that, that's a different league. <laughs> As you say, I'm talking broad brush strokes here, but yeah, I mean, I completely agree. With what you're saying is, yeah, like that, like a a lone wolf is obviously going to be a much more powerful individual <clears throat> yeah but there, there are right? there, there is um you know um guys like benny and snowden and stuff in place in some of these these key positions so as but i mean we, we're not playing in that realm so the 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 thing is to just know that and uh, and to you know it's good to exchange information with, with these groups and the good affiliates to have because the, they can warn you of shit. But the the um, at the at the end of the day, um, yeah, it's uh, uh, it's a question of reading the signals for what those other guys are doing, and then you particularly like the the ever ever grand ship, uh, the ever green ship in the Suez Canal. I'm pretty sure that was a cyber attack, and so it's. Um, it's good to read those <laughs> and, and 
and assess what they what's really going on there and stuff. So it pays to know about all those other groups. Um, but you you should delve into it. Go go have a look at all the. <laughs> I guess that's, 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 yeah, there's like that fire at the power terminal in the UK, and then there was that fire at that microchip plant recently, wasn't there? All sorts of stuff like that. that's happening so all the time. There, there's lots of people out there. There's lots of people out there working on the ground. Yeah. But okay, so then we okay. So should we go? We're going to go with the is like. Hands up with the uh, manifestos. Is it uh, all in favor? Say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. Yeah. In, all opposed? The motion is carried. To be, let's just say we have a new manifesto, but you can, you can change it. Like We must go over it in detail, ask questions and stuff. And, and make sure we know what we want. But I, yeah, I think the next stage is uh, we start publicizing it and promoting promoting the idea. See, see how far we get. <laughs> okay. The Hitchhiker's Guide to Surviving the Flippening. Yeah, it's so much, such a, these things are so from the literature. It, it's it's very funny is that like a lot of these people say it's priming, but it's it's such a weird space that we're in. It's 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 where these things all come together, right? All these roads meet at Philippi, and and so they're coming. All these threads come together, and the actual thing, the the metaphor and the physical thing, they all converge in this very paranormal way and and so yeah it's you just keep on getting these references to movies and stuff because it, it, it's everybody kind of had precognition of what's coming and that, I, I don't think what I'm saying it was more well planned and deliberate that film um don't look up um, was so funny just because it's just oh, it's just tragic isn't it how parallels i'm you know, saying to everyone just trying to say yeah the parallels are just uh, yeah are uh, imitating life really yeah. i love the, the yeah. part where they try and get off to that planet and <laughs> and then meryl street Actually, gets... I was a little bit i was a little bit surprised because i i thought dicaprio was was an insider I, I thought he was one of these guys. I didn't realize that he was on our side. <laughs> so, so I was a bit surprised. I thought he was in with all these transhumanists and stuff. So I, it came as news to me that he's actually on our side. But um, yeah, so freaking apropos. I, uh, um, yeah, thanks uh, for, um, I think Joe gave me the, uh, the, the, the thing in, but it was in Hindi, so I had to watch it with English subtitles. But I got the general idea. But it was it was very it was very funny because of what uh, what they left in English and what they had in in Hindi. So it was it it was it's funny what they leave because they go like uh, yeah you know Arish Mahagate we really fucked eh? <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> it's all like that. I thought, why do you, why do you leave them? We really fun in English. I was ashamed to see it in English because the Mark the Mark Rylance character was absolutely brilliant. I just loved it when all the little uh, drones were going to land on the comet. <laughs> and he's like, ah, I'm getting out of here now. <laughs> it's so funny. His uh, his voice and his uh, his mannerisms. He's a he's a good actor. I liked that. He played the Jeff Bezos character brilliantly. Yeah, it's. Um, I, I mean, I uh, think it was not. It. it was not Bezos. He was Musk. I think. No, what do you think? No, my, yeah, he's Musk. Yeah, he was Musk. Poor Musk. <laughs> and Musk, Musk is not an insider, though. He's he's. They they mixed up all the, you know, 
Freemason stuff. I don't. I think Musk, Musk's an outsider. He's not in that stuff. But um, yeah. But anyway, it was I uh, that movie nailed it. But um, I was surprised at how the establishment panned it. They didn't like it, and I thought, come on, how can you not see how this? Well, maybe they did see how obvious it was. That's why they panned it. But I think the part of the, you know, I think it resonated with the people. Which is good for us. I thought it was, it was a good, so. A good warm up act for, for us. It did make me laugh there because a lot of, actually it was suggested by a friend of mine and the reason he suggested it is because I'd left WhatsApp uh, a while ago um, just because I'd left Facebook and uh, I saw him again at Christmas and then he said, oh, and then he sent me this text message saying, oh, I know how why you like, you hate Facebook and da -de da and but there's this film you should watch and he was, look, he was looking at it completely from the angle of, oh yeah, the, there was so much, you know, everybody's in their phones, they're so absorbed on the internet and social media and all these other issues, you know, and like sexism and all this stuff. And I was like, but what about the blindingly obvious parallel with the fact that we're facing, you know, catastrophic climate disruption <laughs> and, and probably, you know, it just didn't, that part was kind of, well, I think it, you know, he did, he didn't say a lot when I said that. So, I mean, it's not like he's a climate denier, but I was just like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> there's like a bigger issue there than all the other just social bollocks, you know, all the other social issues. Yeah. Yeah. And spoiler alert, they do all freaking die in the end, which <laughs> was pretty bold. <laughs> but but what, what struck me about that was that's what I've been trying to say. And I tried to say in the manifesto is that I, I don't give those. Um, those individualists, they all those sovereign individuals and, you know, all the, that billionaire type. I don't give them any chance, kind of for exactly the reason that, that he spelled out there is that they all think they're going to, you know, outcry, genocide, the flippening and stuff like that. It's so like they're not going to do it, not not because the T-Rex grabs them, but, you know, when it when they come back to down to, to earth and stuff like they are going to be um, in their own worst enemy. They, they're going to, they're going to duke it out with their peers. You know, it's fine that they're all a big club now, but that's because we're around. If, if we're not around, those guys will tear each other apart. I mean, can you, can you imagine a, a world populated by Bezos and, um, and Richard Branson and um, Musk and stuff like that is it's like those guys are ultra competitive. They, they, they would freaking be nuking each other before you, you even through the nuclear winter, you know, the volcanic winter. It's like a pathetic. Yeah, you, you can imagine people like that bickering and fighting over who gets to sit there and make the fire, you know, like with the stick, like the San Bushman. You get to sit there and, you know, picture those people just fighting over who gets the labor to do that instead of all doing it together. Exactly. You think Bezos is going to roll up his sleeves and volunteer to go and get the firewood or kill an, kill an elk or something? <laughs> it's not going to happen. These guys are not going to make it. Let's hunt together. So yeah, if you got a sense of entitlement, you don't got a fucking chance. It's like you got to all share in doing the work to make the fire, to hunt the animals, to like look for clean water to drink because that's running out. Yeah, my my worst scenario. I mean, they are slated to be the survivors, right? They're front running as the survivors. I think more than like the Piraha and indigenous people and stuff. Um, and so what, what what would be really tragic is if, if they made it through and then fucked it up, which I'm almost certain they would do. They were in that position because their fantasy is that they would have some new, I don't know, new city to go to that's all super high tech or they would just commit suicide, wouldn't they? 
Like they wouldn't, <laughs> like they wouldn't want to be. They would. There's no way that they would allow themselves to continue if that was what was left. Surely, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. No, I think I think so. I, I can say they have this. Mars or to some thing they're going to preserve that they can jump into. You know, some vision of a new world. Yeah, they they have a. De I mean, I think they have a very definite position of the new world as with them on top. But um, yeah, it's uh, that's what I think about the Great Reset and stuff. Is is that people like Klaus Schwab and stuff are so um, entrenched in the in their own certainty that they they're not seeing the obvious that w once you put these things into play, the outcome might not be as they think. So you know they can do the financial Great Reset and put that ball into play and not think you know, they can lose control of that. They're so into the narrative of control, they don't notice how vulnerable they are in, in some of these transitions that they're planning. So it's ample opportunity to come out. For anarchists, this is this is the time of a lifetime, but but it's it's the opportunity of a lifetime for so many radicals. So everybody's licking their chops. <laughs> it's gonna be freaking interesting. It's going to be really interesting negotiating this, but yeah, it's it's important to know what's going on because your head's going to have to be on a swivel to keep up when things are really going. So if, unless you, you know, a bit wired into all these groups and stuff, you're not you're not going to understand what's going. To, it's going to be freaking dizzy, right? So we got it, but anyway, slowly. We, this this time, it's not. Not like we've got months or something. I think we've got years. So anyway, all right, good. Well, unless anybody's getting anything else, I think that should wrap it up, shouldn't it? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the goodbye and thanks for all the fish post up there, and uh, and then let's move to the extinction IT sub. Bye bye, Extinction Rebellion. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> so long, and thanks for all the fish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, what a pathetic controlled opposition op. Anyway, I think it served our purposes pretty well. I, I, we I tried. Know. We tried our best. We tried our best. Well, I, I think it's a success. I, I was just, you know, coming them for recruits. And, so, yeah, we did we did fine out of it. We did fine, but but the easier pickings. Maybe we should go on to easier pickings, like you know, the the conspiracy nuts and. <laughs> Those guys are easy pickings. <laughs> Low hanging fruit. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's see how how it goes. Good. All right. Well, then, um, yeah, ne in next week, let's start. Um, hopefully, everybody's finished the manifesto, and then we can, we can do any more late changes and stuff. But then let's start trying to uh, launch a campaign to try and um, publicize the whole damn thing, man. I think I might do an air mail this week. Um, and then that that's probably going to garner a, a lot of flaming. So please uh, support me on it. It's very hard work um, because it's, it's psychology. You, you, you're basically doing psychotherapy for all these nutcases, normies, basically. Uh, and so, yeah, if I... If I do an AMA or so, I'll warn people on the, the Extinction Army sub and then um, just please come and give me some support there because the, an AMA and stuff is a lot of people and uh, a lot of trolling, a lot of trolling. So, you you know, you're going to be sport. I'm going to be complete sport. There. It's going to be blood sport if I do that. But So, anyway, yeah, we got to do it. <laughs> To go go places where Paul Kingsworth would not uh, go where angels fear to tread, 
and it's definitely an AMA and stuff like that. It, it's like um, that clip you linked in one of your videos of Neo fighting all the Smiths. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're the Smiths. The, 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 the Smiths, yeah, the Smiths are right out there on those subs, you know. But anyway, it would, uh, it would consolidate all our thinking and stuff like that. Uh, one of the things I hope, um, I hope I got right. Tell me if, if I didn't. But one of the things I hope to achieve with, with the manifesto is to make sure all our ducks were in a row. So if you saw anything that is inconsistent or in our thinking or, you know, it doesn't make, uh, make sense or anything, then, then, then that's, that's bad. I think, I think that the whole thing should be coherent, um, top to bottom. And then, uh, you know, we'll, we must be defensible as well. But anyway, there's like lots of sport this year. <laughs> Yeah, I think, like I said, I think the manifesto is good. I didn't spot anything contradictory in that sense. I think it's, you know, well-rounded and straightforward. Was it you that suggested this morning uh, um, to to print the book and in the middle you'd flip it? I think it was you that wrote that this uh, morning. <laughs> oh, no, not me. It was someone no. else. But I, I was one, thinking... Maybe it was, um, maybe it was going south. Maybe it was... Um, I couldn't yeah, remember. Yeah, it was who... one of those guys. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I, that was really I, uh, Yeah, I, I definitely want to make a flip book for the for, for the for a, a short movie on the flip. No, no, you know, you know with with the with the earth going. <laughs> yeah, that'd be that'd be really good. I definitely think it's the right time to do this now. I just think it's yeah, it's perfect timing. Just, yeah, just point it's, it's a time to say, look, this is next level. Like, wake up. So. Yeah, yeah. I I'm not sure what our reception will be, but I think our timing is spot on. It's like from anyway. the pandemic. Now there's the flippening. So leave us alone with your pandemic. Now there's much more important business to tend to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. I mean, it's that's the way it is. Is everybody's everybody, there's this pregnant pause? Everybody's stuck in the rut, waiting for Godot, you know. And so this is this is kind of the, a hope that we could contribute to this kind of uh, pricking of the balloon. Hugh, when you post to the other subs for the you know normie review, could you please also cross post it to the um, XR Med sub, so we're aware. You probably you uh, most yeah. most likely do that anyway all the time, but yeah. I, I would I would like to I would like to abandon XR Med now. Oh okay. Well, how would we I mean? I'm not going to lock it or anything like that, but I just like let it let it die now is what I'm thinking. But how would we know leave it all up there for historical thing. purposes, but. How well, do we know where you're cross-posting these uh, or publicizing the manifesto? I put everything from now on 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 our uh, extensionati and and gyrate reset on the, oh, the okay. gyrate reset. Thanks. But but um, yeah, I'm I'm planning to not do any more of the new stuff and stuff. It's getting like boring. <laughs> Everything's just the same old freaking disasters one way. So unless it has any re relevance to surviving. Um, but you know the the kind of uh, psyop part I kind of want to wrap that up and stuff. I don't want to do any more disaster porn and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's probably prudent because um, for for folks who are looking to um, hedge their bets in a way, like if they're not fully convinced that collapse is imminent or happening within their lifetime and we're focusing on survival and how we can do a better job of that, that may still be like, hey, if even if we're wrong, I'm going to gain some some good experiences, some good skills out of this, and um, and some, some good friends, perhaps. So, like, the, there's a... It's a different thing than the gut reaction of, uh, um, you know, everything's on fire all the time, and uh, I'm just not going to believe in that because that's uncomfortable for me. Like it's a, if you're if you're going into it with like, 
wow, these are some really valuable skills uh, that we've all left behind in our industrial civilization. Like, why, why have we lost touch? Um, and I want to grow and I want to have some meaning in my life. Like, that's a different thing. Yeah, I think so. Exactly. It's a more less incendiary stuff and basically yeah. more kind of dark mountain stuff, which is <laughs> it's a pretty <laughs> Paul is vacated dark mountain. <laughs> I would like to do more kind of thoughtful stuff and dark mountain stuff and stuff like that. I mean, I not taking us so seriously, but uh, not not shit posting anymore. It's good, good for good for a phase and stuff. But I think um, people people need something else now. A bit more relief. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So I'll, I'll probably post less often and do more writing, do more writing than just you know just posting news stuff and stuff. It's like oh god. <laughs> and uh, yeah, maybe. The I want to do more anti-Christian stuff because I think we've been holding off too long on that being too politically correct, and and I think that's coming to the fore. Um, we've got to we got to address that this bloody boil of religiosity on it. But that um, yeah, just in terms of uh, the the bug and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, I've I've, I've had. I've not changed my mind uh, even slightly that, that it, there's a worrying component of um, HIV in it. And so it's just like, just try and, try and avoid anything to do. I mean, I'm trying to avoid getting it and I'm trying to avoid the jabs too. Because it's, it, I, 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 I'm looking at stuff and I can see that this, it looks like they've, they've gone um, actually negative on, on efficacy. And so, you know, some guy was, doctor was posting, so there's no logical way that that, that, that could be supported in biology. And said, yeah, there's a fucking good way. It's basically if it has an HIV component and people are getting immunodeficient. And then that would show why you have to keep on having these boosters. And every time you have a booster, it gives you a little bit of protection, but then less and less and more and more negative. That's what the, that's what the data is showing as far as I can see so far. So it's, it's, I, I was commenting on what you said about that is that there's also other factors at play too there's also the fact that um, isolation stress poor diet um vaccines and even if they haven't got uh, engineered hiv components in the in the spike proteins but you know uh, there's all sorts of other factors that are at play that i'm decreasing the immune system and basically people not interacting with each other uh, no, but those should be across the board. You see, what, what, what yeah. the things from Denmark and stuff are showing is that, that people are actually at higher risk if if they have the jab. If they have the jab, yes, I've seen that. I've seen that. And but so, now so you're getting... like a good answer for that is they're getting immunodeficient, which is the thing I've been worrying about. All yeah, but also now. there's the numbers you see, because it depends on the countries, but in the Western countries, now we're starting to get into a high percentage of people who are jabbed. So we're starting to have a kind of a population that's, we don't know. We, we, we don't know. You see, we can't compare. No, no, that, well, no that's the thing about the Danish data. Is, okay. is the, it, um, the, the relative rate of hospitalization and infection is much higher in the vaccinated and boosted. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, so yeah. you know, the, 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 mm. the unvaccinated are drastically unrepresented. Well, it's unrepresented. happening here too. Yeah, you know, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, and and then, so the the other things around all this thing is, I mean, as, as soon as I saw the symptoms for the G variant, is it's like those other symptoms, the initial symptoms were the same time period or about incubation period, about two weeks. They they are identical symptoms to an HIV infection, and the most worrying one is shingles, and then the the, fir the first sign is normally shingles, and then the, and then. Love blow me away. Fucking Pfeiffer come, comes out with the next messenger RNA thing that I just posted today. And what is it? Shingles. You think, oh no, fuck me. You, you're fucking kidding me. This is, they're not even trying to hide it. But 
that uh, you know it's GP three twenty. I think is the is the protein and this uh, GAB um, and ver proteins, and those are the ones from HIV. As far as I know, they they found them in the freaking spike protein, and this Indian guys did the paper. There's all the it was yeah. all freaking out there. So yeah. I, I I yeah I think there's a better than even chance that there's those uh, you know um uh those the what what is it eighty four and eighty eight proteins or so they yeah. they CD four CD four CD eight those those are um the ones uh that uh correlate with hiv and they do with sars too and then they're using these retroviral therapies for that that are effective on hiv and they're also effective on on the g variant and, and stuff and you think oh no come on man <laughs> and then you go and go and look i found this paper from 2014 they they, they made us a, a sars um a sars chimera on an hiv backbone in china <laughs> and then they publish it. Yeah. I mean, this freaks me oh, out so much. I kind of prefer to be sometimes I just trying to find arguments against because it really freaks me out so much. I just had, find it hard to face, to be honest. But they, they're bioweapons, they're straight up bioweapons. But anyway, as long as everybody knows the story and stuff, then it doesn't pay for me to keep on yabbering about it. I, I, I will try and put stuff out there and try and be subtle. But. Uh, I think it's it's worthwhile turning down the anti the refuse prick stuff now because um, as long as everybody <laughs> you know, knows what the the story is, um, there seem to be a lot of retributions now coming for. Um, so so it's it's such an easy gotcha. I think that we should just be more subtle. Yeah, I so think it's really easy to get derailed and die on the wrong hill here. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I, I'm saying. Yeah. I think I think also um, around Christianity as well. That might be the wrong hill to die on, because um, I I mean, I felt like that's uh, granted it may get worse, um, and it likely will. But but um, it's a uh, uh, the 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 new atheist stuff and things like that. Folks folks have kind of moved away from making that a principal part of their identity, like strident, like anti-Christianity, um, because it's just kind of already kind of gotten into the water supply everywhere. Like people are, it's kind of known now that that's, it's like, of course, yeah, that's silly. Why spend energy on it? I know, so, but look, look, what's happening, look what's happening in Brazil at the moment, where where the evangelists are taking nearly over the country, and in other other tropical countries where they're underhand uh, churches are. So yeah, where we are, we we are probably where you say, Ryan, and I agree with you. But are you saying that we shouldn't focus too much on the anti-Christian for tactical reasons, so that well, we wouldn't be? I, I think it's I think it's worth it because um, so the new atheists were just saying, you know, basically there is no good man in the sky, like no bearded, like no metaphysical heaven or whatever. But what Hugh is going to do is more of the psychological element of Christianity. And that's the dead. That's the deadly part. That's the fucked up part. Like that's twisted shit right there. And I think it's worth going into and showing people how twisted it can get. Because I've never seen any like atheist channel talk about the psychological elements of like these death cults and the the Kool Aid drinking. They just say, oh, basically, oh, there is no God. God is dead, and we have killed him, and all that. And that's that's surface level shit. <laughs> that's kindergarten. Yeah. I, I thought so too. I, you see, I thought that this is a trend. But what, what what you saw with Kings North is is I'm sure is going to be a trend because. That you know that that is a hell of a capitulation to go from like dark minded to Christianity is kind of a man. That's a, if 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 Paul can pull that off, it, it's I think a lot of people are going to go that way. Yeah, it's like I don't understand that either because like Christianity is like the enemy of the wilderness oh. and freedom and life. Like Christians have been just like I don't know a Christian in my state it's a very you know heavily christian state that like private that holds nature and primacy 
Like they literally don't yeah, give a, a shit about them. Yeah, it's they, a total they're all sellout. Yeah. It's a total sellout. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so well, um, well, at the it, beginning of the worth, next year, at the beginning worth, of the next year, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's worth going into because I remember in the, your talk with Hank how you showed the uh, clip of the deforestation, the guy like shooting the orangutan, like, and you're bringing up like, you know, that guy thinks he's on the side of God and all that. It's like, yeah, that's 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 uh, apt. Yeah, the, the two, uh, the two billion Christians. Right? was talking about the Book of Genesis being being the the the, the, the definite manifesto. Of, of the war against against the natural world uh, waged by 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 Christianity or by monotheism or whatever you want to call it, you know. Yeah, there might even be a couple passages in the Bible that are wise. Like there's the one with the Tower of Babel and how like God destroyed the tower and then made everyone speak different languages and disperse into tribes. That's yeah, that's like what we should do. But um, yeah, most of it's you know, you, he has gone over it. it's world hating, it's life hating. Um, basically, if Christians want to get on the right track, you basically take like Gnosticism and turn it on its head, like invert it, and then there you go. Plato's world of forms is fucking evil. Yeah, I agree. You see, the, the it's also important, I think, for developing our own ego. So I was saying in the meeting this morning is that, um, you know, it's, I mean, we're a cult, so it's the, the it's standard cults uh, tactics to start developing and defining yourself based on the the other and the out group so i th i think it's easy to form christians as the out group and to um uh, basically to develop our own egregore around that can i ask why christians specifically and not all abrahamic religions all abrahamic religions but the the other two I'm a little bit afraid to go there, right? So that yeah. the, the those guys are a little. Uh, so just so you know, um, one of the reasons why um, <laughs> uh, Hank went a little bit off the wall because because of that, right? He 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 said in one of his bad moments that I was trying to get him uh, killed by the. Uh, friends from the Middle East. And um, so I, I, I never <laughs> wanted him to do anything outrageous or anything. I didn't never pushed him to do, but he, he thought I did. And so he, um, he, he went, had a bad moment. And so it was gonna, I was trying to, you know, get his uh, family killed and stuff. And, but with, you know, by, by these guys, you know, by, by invoking the wrath of, <laughs> of, of the, um, the, the oh, MC. that's interesting. I never knew that. Was that a video you did with with him then that you didn't record or something? You, if you have a look at the Greta videos, right? I was, I was, we were going into this thing, which is basically, is Greta going to lead the you know the Joan of Arc, the Youth Rebellion? And then uh, in right at the end, there I started talking about one of the, Ar <laughs> the Aramaic <laughs> Abrahamic religions. Um, the other one, and then um, he got a little uncomfortable. And he says, "Hugh, do you really want to go?" <laughs> I said, "Yeah." Because oh, yeah, I do remember. I do remember that. That, remember is, that. that, that is the the crux of it. But then, um, yeah, we had some some uh, other conversation. He said, "Like, you you can't go there. Like, the the, the these these guys all you know, Charlie Hebro." <laughs> <laughs> and, me. and I said, well, I, you know, I, I didn't really want to go for those guys because th those guys are kind of a little bit too far gone, right? The, the Christians, you can still talk to, right? Um, if you, you can talk to the other crowd as Zionists, you can, you can hammer them as Zionists. You can just about get that away with that. But starting to wear a little bit thin, where they accuse you of being anti-Semitic when you're anti-Zionist. Um, but yeah, you. You know, in this cancel culture environment, that that so Christianity is a stalking horse for that other religion. But then the 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 jihadi guys they they weird because they 
are, funnily enough, kind of allies, but they're kind of dangerous in a lot of ways. One, because um, they, they're they very fundamental and the, the in, in general, um, but they, they strange allies because they believe in the flipping. So basically the easiest sell for the flipping that you're possibly going to get is, um, is these people of this persuasion because it's actually in <laughs> the Quran. It's uh, described in the in the last hour and that they say the sun will come up in the west and the earth's going to flip as said or so the, so so if you talk to a mullah or uh, you know um an imam the guy the guys think it's the ge ge uh, the magnetic pole reversal because they're a little bit sketch on their signs um and so they you know the, the these guys would be your best friend if you said you, do you know that the the Quranic last days is imminent, and here's the signs. They would love you for that. <laughs> Where it gets a little sticky is they recruiting. You know, they 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 want uh, converts, right? So so if you say like, yeah, you've got it nailed, but you also got the wrong, you also bang down to the wrong guy. <laughs> uh, you got to make you, you, bad you, enemy. You mean they they want to convert a lot, but why? I mean, are they easy to convert? <laughs> to no, because no, it's just this one quirk that they've yeah. got this bit of the science wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 you see, they if if you say, hey, look, we can correct the science for you, they, they'll be your real buddies, and they say, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but what would be the point? Like, what would be the point? I've mentioned it to a Muslim yeah. friend. Said, yeah, it's in the Quran, yeah, and. You know, it was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's how it's yeah. it's it's a fact, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I don't know how much recruiting we can we can do on that score, and that's that's dangerous territory from the point of view of the state. Is is uh, after the far right, the next guys up are are the Islamic extremists, right? So it's so like, um, if if you get too pally with them, then you really are standing proud. So I think I think so I think that the I mean it's permissible to to have a go in at Christians. So so I think you uh, you can get away with that without getting in serious trouble. But in, is, the, is, the, it the, you, is it possible? Is it possible to go uh, after all of them by? Um, by going after more fundamental principles behind that that are shared, that that are just yeah, not. That's what I was like, gonna say. Just don't yeah, go that, after the labels, but go after the the principles behind the labels. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. Is basically through going after Christianity, you can get the other two by default. So we rest Paul's case, and we just. Uh, Forget about his personality and his uh, works, because I, I, I will, I will write again to him when I've rested, because there was too many messages, and but, um, I think we just leave that. We leave, we leave, as you say, Ryan, not personalities, but the concepts and and uh, the whole, the whole idea of Christianity, and and we don't organize meetings with Christians where we debate. I think we we're going to find ourselves in wasting our time. Yeah, but I, I think yeah, if you just let him stew a bit, I, I don't think he's finished with us. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Well, no, we I, the him, amount, he, I, mean, I, have, I have emails here coming in, and I haven't read all, everything, and I, I don't know what I'm going to reply yet, so I just leave it. I'm going to leave that, it. For all. That's <laughs> brilliant because he said, "Don't don't write again," didn't he? To you? Oh no, he said, "Don't write back," but he wrote back because something. Yeah, was well, that's weird. hilarious. And, and then I, something else and I replied and then he replied and then I got another one and I've just left it now to rest for the evening and for tomorrow I think until you know yeah yeah I think this fisherman has caught a bigger fish than he's, he's born for. but I, I think the fisherman is on the hook to the fish <laughs> yeah, but I still think what we said at the start is that he hasn't really looked into our stuff he's only seen very superficial stuff he's, be, he's seen you uh, Hugh, in your provocate, prov 
thought-provoking mode and everything. And, you know, he's taken that as a personal insult, which I feel, I mean, that's his problem. It's not my problem. But, uh, you know, and maybe he wants to look into our stuff a bit more. And maybe, you know, that might be an occasion for him to, I don't know. Maybe so I how about this? How about this? So it did intrigue me a little bit that the one thing he did, he didn't have anything to say about <laughs> was basically what I thought was the like the whole below the water line, and that was my my argument from DNA and DNA, whatever it was. Well, the logo. That was a teenager, whatever. I don't know how he called. No, he didn't say anything about that. No, I don't think he referred to it, which I thought was kind of like really interesting that he didn't go there. And I think I think he dismissed uh, it. He dismissed it. You know, he didn't even. Yeah. He didn't even well, I don't him. think he did. Well, I, if he did, I think that that's... Uh, but you see, yeah. that's why it would be interesting to talk with an intelligent, bright guy with yeah. a good brain. Because, But if he had a sense of humor, and maybe we caught him on a bad day, maybe he didn't like his name to be on our sub. I don't, maybe he didn't <laughs> like that you called him Cringe North. You know, I don't know. It could be something I'm completely... Sure he wouldn't different. be endeared by that. But, oh yeah, but, uh, uh, but yeah. no, I, I just thought it's 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 really interesting that he wouldn't um, he wouldn't gauge on a, a bit of uh, theology. That I, I mean, I, I really want to know what kind of God it is because yeah, I think he's lying to himself and to the world about you know he's this this Christian God, and so yeah, I, w I would like to hear his answer on on my challenge. It's like mystery, why didn't you write a book? Mystery continues to be followed. To be followed. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, I I wonder though. Um, you know, with you mentioned some of the, um, I guess trolliness. Um, if if the XR Med is going to be um, uh, moved away from as a tactic, if the trolliness should be dialed down at, at the same time, like in general. Yeah. 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 But I mean, uh, you know, we're playing the role of the fool, right? We we we. We can't give up our role as cranks, right? So it's, it's well, like I, I think you can play the role of like Socrates in a way, and just like be, um, you know, play the fool in a in a at several moves ahead, and get people to stumble into the realizations. Yeah, but the thing you see, it's not that uh, linear because. You have to take the. It's what we're doing is shamanism and, and exorcism. So you have to take the beast and the demon that you're presented with one at a time, and they they all spread across the 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 gamut in the Ars Goetia. So they're like that. You you will come up against a demon where you have to use all sorts of tactics. You see. So it's like um, for Socrates. Jesus, all of these did. You come up with these Pharisees and stuff. So it's like, if you can't always just play chess, you can't, you can't win this game by just playing chess, right? It's it's all in no holds barred war. So you have to use all tactics. You can't. It's this is not an intellectual game like some so Socratic uh, intellectualizing like these guys on intellectual dark web and that thing. I'm I'm not talking so much about that as I am about kind of um branding because in each individual fight that you have uh it establishes you know or like you you can use whatever tactics and tools you want to to win that particular um engagement but it yeah. has ramifications for all other engagements later um, yeah but that's why, that's why we have to be random right? that, that, yeah. that's why we have to be random and and, and look random you have to be the crazy guy. The only identity we can afford to have is the crazy guy on in the prison unit. Right? Yeah, it's a safe one. Yeah, I mean, if you want to be Socrates of this prison yard, the guys are going to nail you. Well, that, that's what I told you at the start. I don't know if we were recording or not when I told you the big the last email that I got is saying you are a very strange person, Sophie. So that means it. You know that he doesn't. He cannot really fathom anything. He's yeah. not getting. He's, he's punching against something where there's no resistance, and he can't he, he understand that. So, 
I'd like him to to see that. It's just, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we we'll let. Yeah, but look, look at look at all these guys who they make an identity and they polish it. Look at look at yeah, Joe Rogan and stuff. It's like yeah, he's the fashion of the day. But like yeah. how how much longevity does it have? I mean, look at the the Weinstein brothers yeah. and that. they already passe, aren't yeah. they? But who wants to be in a box anyway? But I noticed that the new Extinction AT sub has only got 15 members. The XR Med has 900. So it's going to be very interesting to to follow the <laughs> the tide and uh, yeah, as because, uh, because I think some I think most of those like half I guess or or more are are fake. I think Reddit is faking this up with uh, membership. They they gaming it right, and so I. We, we will definitely see how many people migrate across this, like how, how, how bad the game is. Yeah, but they, they're manipulating everybody. What what it is, is uh, is is uh, social manipulation. So they're doing, um, you know, they, they're doing basically punishment and reward. So they're doing, um, you know, they're trying to shape the audience and uh, doing conditioning, effective conditioning. And so they they're trying to reward you with um, with membership and stuff if you do do the right thing and the right keywords. And yeah, I posted some of the spoof things there where I just said you know, <laughs> and they got really upvoted. And I, I'm not sure those are real people. I think I think those are bots that. Spotted the right keywords, but the, the the bots didn't figure out that I was being ironic. So, anyway, okay, well, so okay, well, there, and does anybody have any more topics? I think we were we addressed them all. All right, then let's wrap it up, shall we? Good, everybody. So let's just uh, pause quickly. Let's pause to. Oh, pardon my name, Mama. Well, thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Smooth sailing. Thanks. Oh, I'm, a, Thank I'm you. in port. Uh, Thank I'm you. Bye-bye. I'm wintering. All right. Bye. All right. <laughs>